Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could hit that red button. I decided to start off my projects today with my newest craft kit. This is a little wood wagon wheel and you get everything that you see here on this screen. So the wheel cut out, you get this burlap sort of ribbon, you get a couple of strands of white pip berries and in the top corner you get some greenery, some little white wax flowers and a butterfly cutout. I decided to just take this burlap ribbon sort of and cut it in half and now I'm just going to create a little shoestring bow out of it. Once you cut this ribbon it shreds and I thought that was a really neat thing. It wasn't something that I had planned but once I kind of Hide it and I noticed that it was starting to fall apart I thought hey that looks kind of neat so I shredded everything just pulled all the individual strands apart and it turns into this really fun little bow When I'm working with little projects like this, I like to trim down the greenery and also take it even a little smaller than each stem. Sometimes there'll be two or three leaves on something. Sometimes it'll only be one or two leaves. It really depends on what you want to do and how you want to style it. But I wanted this to be really soft and delicate and sweet. I'll start by gluing a few of the longer pieces. These are the bottom portions of the stems right into the center facing down and I just like to use the one leaf at the very end that gives me a broader surface to attach the hot glue onto the wood wheel. So I'll just continue adding some greenery until I like the fullness of it. I found these little white flowers at the Dollar Tree. They're called wax flowers and again I'm trimming them down so they'll be a little bit nicer to work with. I'm keeping them in bunches of three and I'm just going to start putting them in between the greenery just to make it look like a little bit of a garden growing out from the wagon wheel. Here I'm adding a few smaller sprigs of greenery towards the top of the wagon wheel. I need somewhere for my bow to be attached to and I didn't want it to be flat on the wagon wheel. I wanted it kind of raised up. So these little greenery picks here are just going to give the bow a little bit more of dimension. Now I'll just take some hot glue and glue my bow right into the center there where I added the additional little greenery stems. I'm going to continue adding a little bit more of these tiny little white flowers. I think they're super cute and just kind of fill in a little bit around the bow too. If you're new to my channel, you may not know that I have opened an Etsy shop and I'm providing some craft kits like this. There's a whole bunch of different ones on there right now and I'm working on a few more for the spring season. So if you're interested in checking them out, go down to my description box and I'll have the link to my Etsy shop there. I decided to add a few sprigs of greenery to the one side up at the top there. That's where I want to place the butterfly, but it just looked a little odd, just glued on top of the wood. The wood on wood tones just didn't make it pop. So I'm just adding some greenery. I'm going to glue on the butterfly and then I'll add a few little white flowers too. I cut the stem of pip berries so there would only be three on there and I'm going to roll them around a pencil, give them a little bit of a curled effect and then tuck it in amongst the greenery and the flowers. I'm going to add three of these, two will be a little bit smaller, this one's a bit larger and then I'll add a few of the individual pip berries around the bow and by the butterfly. I love how this wagon wheel turned out. I think it's so pretty for the spring season, but it's also very neutral and you could have it out all year round.
This next project is super easy. I'm just going to take some fabric and this glass jar and I'm going to make a little cover for the jar. So I'm going to roll it up a little bit and then make sure I have some extra. And then I'll just cut out some of the fabric, leaving a good three to four inches at the top because I want the top part of it to be kind of fluffy. Using hot glue, I'm going to fold over the raw edges and make a nice hem. I want this to be nice and clean at the back. I'll just do it for this side and the other side is folded over and just creased with my hand. So I have a nice straight line and I'm just going to glue that one right on top of this and make a tube. Next, I'll turn the tube inside out so I can hem the bottom closed. I'm using hot glue again for this because it doesn't matter if you see the glue, this will be on the bottom. And this fabric is fairly thick, so the hot glue actually doesn't seep through. I've turned it right side out again, and now I'm just testing to make sure I can get my jar in there really easily and that it will stand straight up even with the glued hem, and it does. I want to make a little cuff at the top and I don't mind that there's going to be some threads hanging. So I'm just going to turn the top part of it over about a half an inch and hot glue it into place. I will trim off any of the extra threads, but I like the raggedy look of the edge at the top. I grabbed a piece of twine from the Dollar Tree and just went around the neck of the bottle and cinched it really nice and tight and you can see how it's so fluffy on the top now. The gathering around the neck has created a really pretty effect. I have this green ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I believe it's called Grohl Green Ribbon or Gross Green Ribbon. Anyhow, I like it, but it was a little too thick because it's more of a stiffer ribbon. So I'm just cutting it in half and it will be a much easier to work with. I'm going to tie some around the neck of the bottle, have some really long strands hanging down, and I'm just going to continue embellishing until I get the look I want. I also have a gray ribbon that's very similar to this. And I'm also going to add some little beads to the twine pieces that are hanging down. Then I'll embellish it a little bit with some lavender sprigs just around the neck of the bottle there and add a tiny little wood bird. Fill it with some sand and some lavender and this project is done and I think it's really cute. When I go to the hardware store or a lumber yard, I'm always on the lookout for the end pieces that are free. And this is one of them. I actually got quite a few pieces about this size the last time I went. So make sure you go and check out their cutoff pieces. And if you're not sure where they are located in the store, just ask an associate and they'll point you in the right direction. A lot of times they'll even help. What I'm doing here is spraying down this piece of wood because I want to add some antiquing wax, but I don't want it full strength. I probably should just put some antiquing wax in a jar with mixed with a little bit of water. That would probably be easier, but I've just gotten too lazy and haven't done that yet. I'm just going to take my brush and just add the antiquing wax until I get the color that I want. And I'm going a little bit thicker around the edges just so you see a little bit of a frame. Then I'm going to take the antique wax full strength and go around the edges of the board making it nice and dark. I let it sit for a while and then wiped off the excess. What I'm doing here is I'm going to be trimming off a triangle piece which is going to fit halfway around this board. So I measured it and I just made two lines at each end and now I'm just going to fold it and crease it really well with my fingernails because I want to be able to tear it and give it a rough edge.
This cardstock is pretty thick paper, so I'm going to use Mod Podge because that's just going to ensure that it sticks properly, but it won't get too many wrinkles in it because it is a thicker paper. I do find when you're using thicker paper, Mod Podge works just fine. It's all the thinner papers that we're using that get bubbly. Then I'm just going to glue it down right onto the piece of wood. Using my Cricut, I cut out some vinyl, the black is the vinyl, and then I also cut out the same letters using the same cardstock that I just glued onto the wood board. Now I'm attempting to glue the paper onto the vinyl and I used Mod Podge, it didn't work, it dried and all of the letters just popped right off. So you'll see me do something a little bit different later. But this is a Cricut offset function and it's really neat. It creates an outline of the letter and you can create different colors and styles and I really love this. If you're interested in learning more about how to use offset in your Cricut, let me know down in the comments and I'll add a tutorial for my next project. You may have noticed for the word family in my Cricut letters that I was missing the A. I'm going to use the heart instead of the letter A. I'm going to give it a couple of coats of white paint and I'm going to do the edges as well. And then I'm going to trace it onto the paper that I used for this project and then cut out a smaller heart so I have a heart on top of the wooden one. Here I'm creating a smaller heart inside the traced outline, about a quarter of an inch or so, maybe a little bit less. And that's going to be where I cut the heart out because I want some of that white paint to show up on the heart itself. First, I stuck all of my letters down about in the center and you can see that that letter just popped right off of the vinyl. So I'm going to be re-gluing that. But I decided that I wanted the word to be a little higher up. So I was able to just peel the vinyl off very easily. I just took my time and then I placed it higher up on the sign. I'm also going to use hot glue to place the heart down where the A would be. And you may notice that there's a black outline from the paper. I just used a Sharpie marker and outlined the heart so it would pop a little bit more. To make sure the letters stay stuck to the vinyl this time, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and then just press them down. I'm so excited to be working with lavender again. It is my favorite flower to work with. These sprigs I picked up at Walmart and I really love how pretty they are. I'm going to make a bit of a swag here at the bottom of the sign. And then once I've got the florals the way I want them to, I'm just going to add a double loop black and white gingham bow. And this project is done. For this last project, I'm going to start out with these Dollar Tree birds. I'm going to paint them black, but I'm not going to leave them black. I'm going to do something a little different with them this time. And what I'm going to do is just give them one coat. This is black chalk paint. Just make sure that they're pretty fully covered. If you see the little bit of the original color peeking through, it won't matter because you won't see that once I'm done. Next, I'm going to take these pieces of wood. They're, I think, five by five, so they're just squares. And I'm going to use a combination of wood glue and hot glue and glue them together in an L shape. And if you haven't guessed yet, if you saw the thumbnail, I'm making bookends. I've kind of been obsessed with them lately, so I'm not sure what's going on in my brain, but I really like the look of them. I'll put the wood pieces together in an L shape with the back piece on top of the bottom piece. I'll do the same thing for the other set. 
I've got some dark gray paint here that I made into a chalk paint. I just took white and black latex paints, or they might have even been acrylic paint, just regular house paint, and I put them together until I achieved the color I wanted. And then I usually put them in a big jar. This is a big salsa jar that I have this mixture in, and it just works really well. So I'm just going to do one coat for these bookends because I'll be doing a distressing treatment on top of them, and then you won't see the original color underneath. But if the original color underneath peeks through, I'm okay with that too. My little birdies are completely dry and now I'm taking this mushroom colored paint. That's the name of the paint. It's from Glidden and I always get a lot of people asking me and I don't know the code for the colors but it's sort of a beigey gray. I kind of call it taupe. It's one of the colors that I have in my home and I really love it. So what I'm going to do is just give these birds a really good coat of this paint. And then before it's completely dry, I'm going to grab a paper towel, scrunch it up, and then just dab off some of the paint. And this is going to give me a rustic, worn, vintage look. And it's going to make some of the black peek through underneath. And I really love how this turned out. It was something that I just thought I would try. I had it in my head, wasn't sure if it would turn out, but I'm so glad that it did. These wood pieces that I used for the bookends were a little bit wide, so the birds looked a little small for it. So I decided to grab some clay and make some little nests to go around the birds and give them a little bit more depth, I guess, or detail. So I'm just taking some clay and I'm going to be rolling it into a sausage and then making a circle out of it. I pinched the edges on the top a little bit so it would be a little taller and not quite so fat. To give the bird nest some texture so it looks more real, I'm taking this chunk of Spanish moss and pushing it into the clay. And this is going to give it the effect of little branches and twigs. There'll be some indentations and it really turned out fun. There were a few little bits of the Spanish moss that stuck to the clay. I just left them in there because I thought that would be a really neat look. Here I've got my birds sitting right inside the clay. They're not sitting on the nest, they're sitting around it. So I'm just going to make sure that they aren't too big. So I did have to take about an inch or two inches off and I'm just going to pinch the clay back together and make sure that it fits really nicely around the bird. And wherever I squished it, I just grabbed the Spanish moss and added some more texture. I'm adding some of the antiquing wax right on top of the bookends. This is going to give it more of an aged and distressed look. And this is just a soft rag and I'm dipping it into a little bit of the wax and then rubbing it really hard all over the bookends. Now that the clay pieces are almost dry, I'm going to paint them because I want to get them glued onto the bookends before they're completely dry. I'm just using a color called Clay from Martha Stewart Chalk Paints, and I'm going to give it a fairly thick coat. Then I'm going to take another brush and use the antiquing wax again and just blend around onto these while the paint is still wet, just giving it a little bit more dimension. I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue Clear Grip to glue everything down. That's going to give it a really good permanent hold. I've already glued down the nests and I've got them kind of on an angle because I wanted the birds to be facing forward, even though they were on the side. So when you look at bookends, of course, you're always looking at them from the side view, but I wanted the birds to be kind of on an angle so they'd be looking at you, even though they're on the side. They don't look exactly the same because, of course, these birds are exactly the same. So when you turn them, they do look a little off, but I was okay with that. I think that just adds to the character of this piece. 
you'll have to let me know what you think of my take on these funky bird bookends. I think they turned out kind of fun. Thank you so very much for spending some of your very quality time with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. If you like what you saw, hit that red subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.